We are continuing our Marvel Marathon Madness with 2023 Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, the second installment in a series of incredible animated films starring a cast of talented actors as the voices of the iconic hero and its different iterations we had in the comics over the years. In this chapter of the story, Miles goes on an adventure with Spider-Woman Gwen Stacy across the multiverse, where he meets a team of Spider-People charged with protecting the very existence of the multiverse, known as the Spider Society led by Spider-Man 2099, Miguel Ojeda. Miles ends up clashing with them over the handling of a new threat in the form of an unpredictable villain, the Spot. So, let us go ahead and jump straight into the plot. On Earth-65, Spider-Woman Gwen Stacy has become increasingly isolated from her friends and estranged from her father, George. George is hunting Spider-Woman for killing Peter Parker, unaware that it was an accident that actually caused Peter to to die after he turned into the lizard. Gwen encounters a version of the Vulture from an Italian Renaissance themed alternate universe and Miguel O'Hara and Jess Drew arrive through dimensional portals to help neutralize him. George corners Gwen and so she decides to reveal her identity to him but he still attempts to arrest her. Heartbroken, Gwen leaves with Jess and Miguel through the portal. Back at Miles' home in Brooklyn on Earth 1610, it has been 16 months after Kingpin's defeat and the destruction of the Alchemax Collider, and Miles is constantly in conflict with his parents due to his responsibilities as Spider-Man that are interfering with his personal life. He later gets grounded when he is late to a party celebrating his father Jeff's promotion to police captain. Following that, Miles encounters the Spot, an Alchemax scientist turned supervillain whose body was infused with portals during the explosion of the Collider. The Spot blames Miles for causing his mutation, and reveals that the spider that bit Miles and gave him his powers came from another dimension, Earth-42, while the Spot was testing the Collider. The Spot then accidentally transports himself into a void where he learns to use his portals to travel to other universes, and empowering himself by using Alchemix Colliders in those other dimensions. Gwen travels to Miles' dimension and they reconnect sharing their struggles as well as hinting at feelings towards each other. Gwen secretly tracks the spot and opens a portal to the next universe he has gone to, Earth 5101. Miles follows Gwen into the portal and the two team up with the universe's local Spider-Man Pavitar Prahakar and later Hobie Brown against the spot. The spot starts absorbing the power of the Collider and he and Miles share a vision of his future attacks which include the deaths of Jeff and Police Inspector Sting, the father of Pavitar's girlfriend, Gayatri. The Spot escapes and Miles saves Cinch from the Collider's destruction, but the world begins to collapse before other spider people arrive to contain the damage. Miles, Gwen and Hobie are taken to Nueva York in Earth 928, where a multiverse society of spider people known as the Spider Society works together to combat all kinds of threats. Miles meets Miguel O'Hara, the leader of the society, and reunites with Peter B. Parker, who introduces him to his infant daughter Mayday Parker. Miguel explains to Miles that each of the Spider People's stories contain what's known as canon events, such as the death of police captain close to Spider-Man, which cannot be disrupted or they risk the collapse of that universe. Miles realizes that the spot killing Jeff is actually a canon event, and he is imprisoned by Miguel to prevent Jeff from being saved. Miles frees himself with help from Hobie and flees the society in pursuit. Miguel corners Miles and cruelly tells him that he was never supposed to become Spider-Man and that Earth-42, the place that the spider that bit him came from, has no Spider-Man because of that. After an ensuing battle, Miles overpowers Miguel and, with help from Margot Kess, aka Spider-Bite, he rushes back to his own universe. Gwen, who is frustrated by the entire fiasco, stands up for Miles and is angrily ejected to her own universe by Miguel. Back at her home, Gwen reunites with her father George and they reconcile when he reveals that he has decided to resign from the force instead of arresting her. George then gives Gwen a makeshift portal device left for her by Hobie. Gwen uses it to travel to Earth 1610 and begins searching for Miles, as do other members of the society. Miles then reveals his secret identity to his mother Rio, but she seems to be confused. It then hits both Gwen and Miles as they realize that Miles is actually in Earth-42 
in not his own universe, as Gwen is right now. Back in Earth-42, Miles' late uncle Aaron Davis is alive while his father Jeff is actually dead, and New York is crime-ridden due to the lack of Spider-Man. Aaron then captures and restrains Miles, and he is joined by Miles' Earth-42 counterpart, who in this universe he is actually the Prowler. As the Spot begins his attack on Earth-1610's New York, Miles prepares to escape his restraints. Gwen promises to Rio and Jeff that she will find Miles, and so she teams up with Peter B and Baby Mayday, Pavitar, Hobie, Margot, Spider Noir, Penny Parker, and Spider Ham as they head off to save Miles. So, calling this sequel a smash hit would be an understatement. Box office wise, Across the Spider Verse almost doubled the amount that Into the Spider Verse has made, as it grossed a worldwide total of $690 million. And just as with the previous chapter, this installment made an impact on both critics and audience alike, with praise and delight in regards to this adventure coming from all corners. The striking animation and visual tone were beautifully done, and it keeps you entranced throughout the entire ride, and the imagery and comic-like tone are so good, I just loved it. The sense of adventure and the contagious enjoyment you get from watching this movie is on another level. And Miles' character is the perfect connection for the audience to experience this cross-dimensional escapade. And the way the story is told through the animation is phenomenal. The overall plot is engaging and the action is fantastic. But what was really cool is how each spider person introduced was uniquely different and still fascinatingly captivating. Every part of from the first film was only improved on in this movie, as the emotions of the characters are felt so earnestly and the writing and direction is top notch. I had an absolute blast with every minute spent watching this. Overall, with a fantastic cast, an incredible story and second to none animation, Across the Spider-Verse has joined the club of select few films that can state, hey, the sequel is just as good if not better than its predecessor. This is such an enjoyable, heartfelt, and captivating movie, and that is why I am giving this film a 9 out of 10. Now, the next movie I will cover will be 2018 Venom, and following that is 2021 Venom Let There Be Carnage. So stay tuned, and please do consider hitting the like button and subscribing, I would truly, truly appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for spending your time with me. Until our next adventure, y'all stay classy.